I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. Um, the jet stream doesn't have a mind of its own. It is very, very important and it basically, the position of the jet stream dictates the weather type in the northern hemisphere for the northern jet stream, the southern hemisphere, the southern jet stream. And there's also a corresponding intertropical convergence zone around the equator. And how these uh, winds, upper air winds, move is very important because they drag the, the or they're the course on which the low pressure systems are moving, generally speaking. But there must be a logic to their movement. There must be some inherent agenda that they have Right, the jet streams uh, change uh, continuously, um, but their uh, development is largely influenced by solar activity and lunar modulation uh, of that solar activity, which changes the way in which they can, the waves along the jet streams can advance or not. And when they don't advance and you get a semi-static jet stream, then you can get extreme weather events and we're able to predict the reoccurrence of those sort of situations. It seems the, um, the, the moon we can predict more or less its movement behavior, but the sun, there's, it's just a phenomenal occurrence. I mean, there's no way to detect, to, to uh, predict what's going to happen on the sun. Well, we can predict. It's going to happen in a lot of ways and more significantly we can predict the effects the sun is going to have um, using a lot of analysis of past observations and data which have enabled us to develop uh, um, what we call weather action indicators which are indicators of solar effect. Well, you said in your speech there's been no increases in hurricanes, tornadoes, sea levels. Uh, there hasn't been, in terms of like 10 or 20 year averages, there have been uh, short term very significant increases in the last nine months of very extreme events, which we understand in terms of solar lunar effects. But if you look over a longer time scale, there's in fact been a decline in tornadoes and, uh, and uh, a generally static view of uh, extreme um, or, or all hurricane events as measured in America, which is the uh, best data set around. You know, you seem to be a therapist as well. You're advising people to be guilt-free, to increase their <laughs> carbon footprints. Yeah, well, if you want to increase your carbon footprint, do so. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, CO2 is the gas of life. If there's more carbon dioxide, all plants and agriculture is more efficient. Um, I'm not suggesting people should waste just for the hell of it, but I mean, CO2 itself is a good thing. But surely all of man's endeavours, all the pollution in chimneys and factories, surely are having some detrimental effect. Well, the uh, chemical pollution, uh, nuclear radiation pollution, those things have to be combated and dealt with, absolutely. And with modern technology, uh, they can be. And in fact, London is now, the air in London is cleaner than it has been uh, since Roman times because there are, you know, measures in place to stop, to stop uh, smoke pollution. A lot of uh, the speakers here today seem to be playing on the idea that man, there's some fad going on that man has to see himself in a negative way. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I don't agree that man has to see himself in a, in a negative way. I mean, uh, um, I'm not a Maoist, but I do remember Ma Tse Tung said every um, person, every stomach is born with a pair of hands. So, you know, mankind can produce and that, that being the case is a bit strange that the Chinese have this this policy which I understand they've now changed of a one child thing I mean obviously one has to try and you know uh, there's a certain rate at which population can grow sensibly or not but uh, uh, you know if humans are able to organize they can look after themselves and the world is very large actually there isn't 
a population problem as such. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Some people are interested in what I do because it might help them, you know, predict certain things. But a remarkable number of big companies are more interested in uh, climate change bandwagonism and uh, getting people to take out unnecessary insurance policies on the back of scare stories, for example.